the the big the big problem with people is and here's one of the mechanisms and people can check out the podcast. I mean, we don't have to get into the, the advanced chemistry. I mean, some of the stuff even goes over my head, but basically one of the big problems is glyphosate is pretending to be glycine. And that's what she talked about. Basically it's your body. Which is an amino acid. Right. So it's looking for glycine, but then it sucks up glyphosate in place of it. Right. And that's where you get into trouble. Yeah, you kind of similar to um, what may happen in your body with iodine and fluoride, for instance, or bromine, right? It'll, it'll suck up your thyroid, it'll suck up a lot of those nutrients, which can impact its function because it, it, it's not the primary nutrient it's looking for. And then here's what it says. Advocates claim that glyphosate is not harmful to humans as the shikimate pathway does not occur in humans. But the truth is glyphosate enters our gut and primarily targets the good bacteria. And then that's when you get the bacterial overgrowth. So that's kind of what the industry will, will counteract and will say, well, humans don't have shikimate pathways. That's why it's not dangerous. But the mechanism is that it's killing the good bacteria in the gut. And it's really an antibiotic to, you know, disguised as an herbicide. And so that's the problem. Yeah. I think the big thing that if you look at some of the studies on the topic where they look at glyphosate's impact on the gut lining and the brush border in the small intestine, the brush border is what secretes a lot of enzymes and aids in digestion. And if you just look at the thinning out of the gut lining in the small intestine, and you look at the increase in gut permeability that can happen from that, all of those type of mechanisms are part of what's driving a lot of autoimmunity. So when you have increased gut permeability, weakened gut lining, um, you have a imbalance in the healthy bacteria in the guts, all of those tilt your immune system in the direction of autoimmunity. It tilts your immune system in the direction of um, lack of nutrient absorption, which then affects the immune system as well. So all of these things compound, right? Gut, in back, gut bacteria imbalanced, dysbiosis, right? More bad bacteria than good. Gut permeability, increase autoimmunity, increase food allergens, less nutrient density. Obviously, if you're eating plants that have a lot of Roundup, there may be less nutrients in those plants, right? So all of those things just kind of spiral out of control. And, and typically, if you're consuming the, the big foods that are going to have the highest residue, they're going to be a lot of your grains, right? Grains and soy and corn and wheat and all those things. So if you're eating a lot of those foods, that's a lot of processed food anyway. Yeah. And that's why you and I talk about a lot of people feel so much better on like grain free or more paleo template, because not only are they getting rid of the allergenic foods, but they're getting rid of the chemicals too, because everything is so heavily sprayed. Now, one of Stephanie's arguments, which was interesting was that the people are having so much gluten sensitivity is because of the glyphosate. And so she told me she actually eats organic wheat and she feels totally fine. And I said, well, what about gluten and zonulin and all that? And she goes, I don't know if that's the full story because I feel fine, but feeling fine. I don't know. I'd like to see like a stool test, right? And look at gut inflammation and all that and try to confirm because, and look at gluten antibodies, because I still, even if it's organic, you and I are still not going to recommend people going into the grains. A hundred percent.